Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. Oddly, we have not posted any guides or tips on Vantage since she came out despite her being one of my mains. So today, after playing her extensively since her release and also playing her non-stop since the launch of Season 20, this is your master guide to Vantage. This will be the format and everything is going to be timestamped. You can pause if needed. I'm not going to verbally go over everything because we're just going to deep dive into it. It's in the description and also in the pinned comment. Now let's begin with what perks are best. In Apex Legends Season 20, they released the new perk system. So let's talk about all the time I spent and how I manage my perks on Vantage. Let's begin with Tier 1. Let's talk about Ringmaster. This one's a little easier if you happen to run with a Caustic, Watson, Rampart, or even a catalyst and why this is easy because then you simply have to go with ultimate reload that's very simple because they're going to hit this now let's say that you're filling in the role of potentially becoming the ringmaster and that's why i'm standing in front of the beacon here now we're going to talk about these numbers as we're going to rotate so you have 450 evo at the start so let's go ahead and hit this and this is going to give us that additional 200 points 200 points all right if you get that reference comment down below so we're going to segue over here now and hit the Harvester. Let's say we wanted to push a team over on Mill. So the beauty of this is that you can wait before you decide to hit this perk. And there's a few things that you need to consider. Let us say, for example, that we actually don't have a console here. And then maybe the rotation that we're going to doesn't have a console. Let's say we're going south or we're going this way, but there's no console. In this example, we happen to have console, so console would actually be a good perk to take. Now, let's say it pulls in the other side of the map and it's pulling towards launch pad that doesn't have consoles, then it may not be as ideal of a perk, and you can hold on to this. Don't listen advantage. It says better upgrade now. You don't actually have to do that. So we're gonna we're gonna wait. So if we decide to hit beacon and not push, then that gives you your answer. As well, if you loot the whole POI and you don't happen to find any ult cells, but you plan on rotating, then you might actually want to go with the ring console instead. If you find that you're finding a lot of ultimate accelerants, then going for this is actually going to be better for you. Or if you happen to decide that you want to push the team instead and that you're actually going to be an edge team. So let's break this down a little bit. Let's say, yes, you're going to hit, you know, console. Then you're definitely going to play more zone, right? That's going to be your, you're going to play as a zone team, but maybe garner that information and maybe play a little edge. But if your team is very aggressive and running around and they're already running to the next squad, then that might not be as beneficial. I would say if your teammates are struggling, hitting the ring console is better because you're going to gain that extra points. If you find your teammates feel a little bit more competent, then I had to listen to what she's going to say there. So we hit this because this is a team wide thing, right? You've already gained. 200 for hitting the survey, 200 points, all right, for the ring scan, and you've gained 350 for Harvester. That's team-wide. Everyone in your team has got blue and has worked their way a little bit into blue already. And that's without hitting a supply bin, looking at anything at the sky, and that's already a massive benefit. So hitting that over and over is definitely going to be a huge dub, and that's why I would say delay this and kind of look at the variables. I would say her perks are definitely the most interesting, the reason why. She's the only legend in the game that can hit both a ring console and can also hit a survey beacon, which is fascinating. No other legend can do that, so she fills a very niche and unique role in that. Meaning as well, when you're leveling up armor, she can constantly keep leveling them up by hitting the consoles or hitting the surveys, which are great checkpoints, especially if you feel like your squad is struggling to doing damage or if you're just providing information to them because then nobody else has to fill this role. So let's say you have two skirmishers in your squad. Let's say you're running with Horizon and Wraith, then this provides more flexibility. But of course, if you're not planning on using that, then it's very straightforward. Just go for the two additional bullets. This is very handy. And the reason why it's very handy is because when you're fighting off drip drop, then realize that nobody else in the game is going to have purple early on, which means that those two extra bullets, if you hit somebody for 150 and 150, which we'll talk about the ultimate a little later, it's going to be a massive benefit. We're going to talk about this later as well, but it takes about four minutes to garner every single one of your ultimate, like all the way back up 40 seconds per bullet, which we'll also remind later on in the video. So let's talk about the next set of perks, because this one's a little more straightforward, unfortunately. Now, G Dolphin has discovered as well that if you go with the improved tactical double jump, that you can actually put away your gun sooner and fight a little faster when you're in the air. Little benefit there if you're going it. Now, it has been shown by you guys in the comments section, the improved tactical double jump improves by five meters. Which, to be honest, is not really that much, sadly. And I don't really find this as a benefit right now too much. 
even if you can pull out your gun a little faster, that is a bit of a benefit. And I don't know if it's a bug, if it happens every time. So I'm just mentioning it here. And I'll showcase it on screen, but please give G Dolphin all the support and love in the world. I, I should have asked him prior, but I, I definitely wanted to showcase it here real quick. Um, I'm gonna put his link down in the description down below. He's an amazing Vantage as well. And he has hit Pred on Vantage. And so, hey, G Dolphin, love your content, man, by the way. You're an amazing Vantage player. Uh, just, just had to get that out there. <laughs> All right, and then the next one, which is the one I always go for, Refresh Tactical and Hits with the Ultimate. Now, this one has been a little buggy for individuals in the test range when you're shooting target dummies because it doesn't refresh on target dummies. You actually have to hit an opponent. So once you hit an opponent, what's the benefit of this? Well, let's say, for example, that you decided to take height right here, right? Reposition. And then you saw the ankle right here and then you hit one and then you get your, your tactical and then you fly over to the spot. It keeps you mobile. The benefit of Vantage is always being able to move from spot to spot and filling out that role, which we're going to discuss here in a minute and discuss that role and what role she actually fills for her squad. So again, recap, you can delay this. Remember what perks you want to take and how you're going to benefit your squad. Most likely the right is going to be what's going to benefit you most, but you do have some of the slight advantages here as well, but not as many, but just mentioning them so that you're aware. So let's talk about next her role in the squad, and then we're going to get down into her ability. So let's break that down. As I'm rotating, I wanted to provide another tip, especially when it comes to garnering these. Because you're advantage and you can keep using your tactical and moving around, and we'll talk about this movement that I'm doing right here when we talk about the tactical, but the benefit of adding all those points up and how quickly they add up. So we're going to jump cut and showcase the points at the end here. 200 points, all right. And then of course, what you would garner afterwards would be another 200, which means that you're only 300 points away from purple. And that was only done by hitting Cedo Station, hitting the Harvester here. And my gosh, that is massive. Even if a team was fighting nonstop, with your rotation and the ability they have advantage, you can definitely carry your squad to garn as many points. And this doesn't even add up everything else. So that's the beauty of what Vantage can do as we segue to the points and how they work and her role within the squad. Let's break that down next. Now, let's discuss the role that Vantage can fill for her squad. Really, when it comes to taking a new angle, we call this off angle. So let's say, for example, that I have an entry and support. Let's say I have a wraith and a conduit here, and they're working their way in. But I'm able to take what we call an off angle and look for an opportunity to go for a crack or find some additional damage, right? This is very beneficial because she has the ability to instantly relocate and queue up to height or queue to an angle, or even come back over to where they're located and reposition with them. Now, Vantage can essentially fill out every role because even over here, if she was the backup and support, she could technically reposition in the back and create an angle for Wraith and play as a support. Now, let's say that Vantage in this situation, if she didn't have any teammates that were pushing, but managed to get some damage. In. Now, she can blast open the doors. We're gonna talk about that tip a little later, but if you queue forward, she can technically makeshift as a entry fragger so you're probably asking the question of why i don't classify her as one that can entry frag well the reason is because of her hitbox so on screen what we did at one point is we actually looked at every single hitbox size in the game advantages hitbox unfortunately is on the larger side and because of that she works well when it comes to mid range to long range and burst damage when it comes to close range. So if you're going close range, we can talk about the weapons. We're going to talk about them in just a hot second, but burst damage such as shotguns and anything like that is always going to be good because you can't necessarily go in a fight and utilize an R99, a car SMG, a Volt, and expect to win a close range encounter because your hitbox is a little larger. So to break this down, she can play off angle to look for an off angle roll. She can technically play support and if needed, she can can technically move in first because of her tactical to clean up. But I highly encourage any Vantage to ensure that you know where they're located, the number of people in that building, and if you can surprise them by relocating. So not necessarily taking the direct approach, but let's say they anticipate that you're gonna take the front door, then even then I would go for more of an entry flank off angle to surprise them. You're ability to surprise and throw opponents off is everything so if you ever watch any of my gameplay my mistakes always occur when i take any situation head on now if i happen to surprise them and reposition or flank that is where the strength is now of course you need to make sure that your teammates are going to reciprocate this but again you put pressure by closing that gap and moving forward you can be technically the forward scout 
for the squad and also float. So we call a floater roll if you're technically holding a general area. Technically, Vantage could float. I don't necessarily encourage it because of her hitbox. I think she supplies best as being a anchor. But if she's anchoring a building, she has her weaknesses because essentially she cannot miss a single one of her ultimate shots. If she does miss any of her bullets, it pretty much tells the opponent that you are not good and they're going to nonstop push. And essentially, if you miss any shots, let's say for example, you, sh you miss, 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 half your bullets are gone and your opponents are counting. The better your opponents are, they know how many bullets you may have potentially remaining. And we're gonna give some tips on the ultimate as well in just a minute, but I wanna highlight the dangers of running Vantage and if you miss your shots. So practice this, this is very, very important because otherwise it's gonna throw you in for a loop and you're gonna find that people are going to disrespect you as a Vantage, especially if they can close that gap and you do not have that burst damage. So these are the roles that she could fill in the squad and she's quite flexible, which is why I say when she's a flex roll she can do pretty much a bit of everything and if she needs to re reposition and get away it is very hard to catch a vantage out of position or even catch up to one so now what we're going to do let's talk about what are the best guns to run on vantage let's break that down now all right when it comes to running the best guns on vantage of course this is going to be take this one with a grain of salt if you will and the reason why is because this could all be opinion based based on your skill level. But I'm going to recommend what I run and what I find best when running Vantage, essentially. The two guns that you see on screen are hands down currently in season 20. My best loadout. And the reason why is because I still have the ability to draw sufficient fire, but also have a strong resource count, right? I can still keep blasting. But the Havoc is a fantastic gun in terms of damage per second. So it has a large mag, you're able to do a lot of damage, but not have to worry about running out of a mag, especially if you're close range and you need to clean up. Even if you were to drop and start pre-firing and shooting and keep blasting, it does last for quite some time, and that is a massive benefit. So on screen, I'm going to overlay. Shotguns are great for burst damage if you don't want to run a Havoc. Um, Nemesis is fantastic. A Hemlock is also great. You're going to notice a Prowler is also really strong. Notice that we're looking at burst damage, right? Even if you wanted to run a Sniper, we're going to talk about this when we talk about the Ultimate, you can definitely do that. But resource manage it, management is important. So let's talk about resource management and what you're going to run. You don't necessarily want to run a Havoc and let's say and SMG. And the reason why is because your ammo count's gonna deplete very quickly. So you're probably asking the question on why in the world am I saying not to run an SMG? Now, for those that are really good with SMGs and you one clip, by all means do it. And the reason why, again, is hitbox size. I always find best if you're gonna jiggle peek with her and come around a corner and then re-peek it is best, but your hitbox does tend to punish you quite a bit. So I'd rather go for the burst and re-peek and then if I need to reposition after that peek and then take an off angle and then go from there as well. I don't necessarily ego challenge, especially if I'm facing somebody with a smaller hitbox such as a Wraith. Now that's where the burst damage comes in. When it comes to running anything ranged, the reason why is you will definitely want to use the advantage of the perk. Now, if you're running an AR, I highly recommend running a shotgun as a, just to be ammo efficient, right? So let's say you're running a hemlock and then you need to run a shotgun, then you need to balance it out. I don't recommend running both a hemlock and let's say a, a havoc because then the downside is that you're going to burn through ammo too quickly at least with a shotgun you can keep your ammo count relatively low and because of that you don't have to worry about using as much space and you can garner more heavy ammo to run this such as a nemesis and so forth so that's my recommendation with guns and what i personally would run with vantage and the reason why focus on burst and focus on that Power. Now, one thing you could do, here's a caveat, if you want to run nothing but close range on Vantage, this could be a very, very, very aggro set, but of course the downside is you may not be able to utilize that perk unless you're putting a 2x on it, which most people aren't going to run a 2x on an SMG or anything like that. Let's say like you ran R99 in a shotgun, right? This definitely can work, but again, you're kind of missing out on some of that perks that you're going to use at a distance, and what you could do is definitely just ADS normally which can definitely be a benefit as well. But in a fight, you definitely want to call out those armors and call out that information best for your squad mates as humanly possible. So again, there's different ways that you can run this, but based on those roles and what I discussed, it's not impossible, but I'm putting the variable out there just in case there's always somebody out there in the world who can utilize that. So now we're going to discuss 
are the abilities. So let's go from the passive, then the tactical, and the ultimate. Let's break it down. The passive ability is probably one of the most interesting things for Vantage that actually helps your team know whether to push or hold. And the reason for this, if you happen to have blue armors and you ADS and immediately see that the opponents have white, this pretty much screams that you have the armor advantage and can push this fight. You can locate which opponents are really caught out as well just by just by a quick look. It's I mean, especially if you have a hard time finding people at a distance, that's what I mean. So if you're looking, you say, OK, one here and then one over there. It, it's a little easier to spot people. I find I can be a little bit more relaxed when just hovering over because at least it gives me an indicator. And so not to get lazy with it, but at least it helps me find out where everyone's located and if they're stacked up on top of each other. Now, these optics do change and where you pick them up. Now, if you have a 2x, the distance is actually at 175. Now, if you have a 3x, the distance is at 200 meters. If you have a 4x, it's 250 meters. And at a 8x, is at 450. So it keeps scaling. Now, some additional tips is that I have a hard time hitting the correct mirage. Now, if you're looking at a mirage, the benefit here is you're going to be able to spot them out and it'll say decoy. It's easier to spot people who are hiding in shrubbery. If they're hiding in these little crevices and everything, like I said, it kind of takes away that busy work right you can see them through windows so if they're peeking anywhere it does help a little bit to get that e advantage no pun intended <laughs> and of course you can mark them as a decoy which will break down in just a hot second one thing i make a major mistake of doing is not pinging when you ping an opponent it pings their armor especially this was called out on my live stream i know i do this a lot make this mistake but it doesn't hurt to ping, you know just to ping them just to spam it at least because it gives information on the armors or the remaining people in the squad now let's say you saw a rat i mean it's going to ping that it's a solo player and then you can instantly push that so the passive has a lot of power in letting you know but also communicate with your squad mates i usually do this verbally especially when i'm playing with a squad i'll say three blue armors or two blues and a purple um pinging on my spot right here and especially when you know that you have that armor advantage and you start sniping them and blasting them and you hit one for 150 it just screams for your entry just to go rock and just do whatever they want and then instantly you are pushing most people sleep on the power of this information and in pushing but i promise you if you have a really good vantage on your squad it's going to be the biggest w for your team ever so now what we're going to do as well is we're going to discuss the bullet drop tips one of the biggest things that you gain, and I'm going to showcase this from the footage that I have from the stream, is you're going to gain a little marker on the center, which does help, and it showcases the bullet drop. Now, my recommendation is always to just memorize this bullet drop, but it does help so you can see how far the bullet needs to you know, drop, no pun intended. You miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. So you need to take these shots and you need to practice with it. And I promise you, you're going to benefit massively just by memorizing that distance. This is a great visual. And let's say you don't want to play advantage at all or you just want to learn bullet drop vantage is hands down the best legend for learning it because it gives you that visual marker. So that also is a massive benefit for vantage. So let's segue now to her tactical movement. I'm just going to get this one out of the way right away is one of the most important things that I see with most advantages that they don't utilize is when you use your tactical is you need to hold crouch and you can just press it and then hold it to keep your momentum and move it down. This cooldown is a 20 second cooldown. And if you throw echo, it is only 35 meters. You can extend this to run 40 by moving echo a little forward. And then if you move echo all the way back and then echo moves, he moves at approximately 55 meters, if I'm not mistaken. So what you're going to do, and this helps a lot, and you're probably asking, why don't you use the double jump? So let's showcase that. Sometimes you'll hit your head on stuff, but also it's like a octane jump pad. It's very predictable movement, right? And sometimes it can really throw off an opponent, especially if you're trying to move down and you keep that movement and you can use it into a tap strafe. So I highly recommend using the crouch, but also it throws opponents off and you don't stay hovering as well. So let's showcase that again. I'll just, so you slide, you do this, and then you're instantly kind of on the move already, right? You kind of have a, I call it a Walmart version of Pathfinder, and that benefits massively, especially if you're trying to get away. You don't want to be in the air longer, especially if somebody's chasing you. That 20 seconds is massive and getting it back, but even just sliding and moving and getting out of cover. So let's say I was being chased. I don't want to be in the air longer, but if I want to cut the corner, 
I slide and I just keep moving and that makes it much more difficult than if I was in the air a second longer because then they can shoot me for an extra second and you want to avoid that as much as possible. You'll notice one thing I'm doing as well, as well as I'm putting echo away all the time. And the reason why is echo unfortunately is a character that stands like a, a crypto drone essentially. I can't stand having Echo out and it screams where you're positioning and just remember Vantage's benefit is always ensuring that you have the jump and surprise. Having your Echo nearby means that you're within a certain radius, right? Echo starts moving around that 55 meter mark so you know they're at least within 55 meters. And most people don't think to move around 55 meters and they're literally standing right in front of it. Okay. Also, if you're trying to reposition, the downside of doing this, if you happen to throw Echo out, is they know where you're gonna go. If they know where you're gonna go, that's a downside. You wanna surprise them. You wanna be able to reposition and then throw Echo out. So what I'm doing there is to showcase you need to have line of sight. So if you wanna cancel this, and let's say you throw it out and you look away, you can cancel it. There's also the downside, if you really thread the needle on this, sometimes you'll run into a janky animation like this, ready? If you really thread the needle, and then sometimes you'll hit the side of it. It can be kind of hard to replicate, because you, it's like you're really threading, threading that needle pretty tight, and then you'll run into an animation where you like smack the side of the wall. So be careful whenever you do that. Now, put away Echo immediately. I always put put Echo away the minute that I'm double jumping. I have the, the button. Use the ability to avoid danger. I'll highlight, I did this on stream, so if there's a Bangalore ultimate in the way, if you're trying to avoid a Horizon ult and you don't want to shoot it because you're by yourself. So if you're threading that needle pretty tight, you see how you smack it a little bit? You can do it. Now, another one is if you're zip lining back and forth. Remember the downside is that if you run away from Echo, Echo moves about the same speed as a zip line. So keep that in mind. If you are utilizing a Valkyrie ult, then remember Echo just pretty much disappears and goes away as well. I'm trying to think of anything else, but that's pretty much it. So let's showcase this now. Now, if you try to use Echo while in the zip, it LOSs. So what I recommend doing is you drop off, but you got to make sure that Echo catches up. So Echo catches up because of the same movement speed. You throw it out, jump off, then you move, right? That's a benefit. You can also do this on the gravity cannons, which is why I decided to utilize this map. So there is that benefit as well. But when you utilize it, don't do it at the exact peak. Do it when you're closer to the end and you got to time this. Timing is important. I think it takes about 0.5 to really activate Echo and to really launch. 0.5 to one second approximately. So let's showcase that now. Let's say you need to reposition. You're like, oh God, there's a team over there. So you want to pretty much hit this. And you can hit your cancel. If you hold it too long, it's like a magnet. You'll kind of stay stuck in the air, right? You don't want to stay stuck in the air when utilizing that tactical because you're going to be easier to shoot. You also don't want to hover as well either when you're utilizing the tactical. So be sure if you are going to use a double jump, the double jump does add about 20 more meters, which is great up above the base 35. But if you're going to hover like this, this is bad especially when you're trying to decide what to do. You only have a second to decide to reposition and move away. It can be beneficial if you really realize that entry damage isn't gonna be good. So you're probably asking the question as well, when do you utilize the, the tactical? Well, like we discussed, if you're gonna try to make shift entry, let's say you crack somebody here, hit him for 150 and they peek again, then you can reposition and then go for essentially the kill. You know, you got that additional 50. If they peek here, you got them, and then you can kind of bait them and push them, and hopefully your teammate is putting pressure. That noise, by the way, is because of the server. I've been in here for quite some time. Bomb diffused, bomb diffused, bomb diffused. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it in there because I think this point was pretty important. That pretty much covers everything I can think of when it comes to the tactical. Again, utilize that crouch. You're gonna benefit massively from it. I think it really adds the mobility and you can use a tap strafe in it for Vantage. And I personally think that Vantage benefits strongly from MNK just because of the range, but it doesn't mean you can't have your strengths on console, which is a great segue when we talk about the ultimate. So let's talk about that now. Last tip for the tactical for those that are hell bent on keeping your Echo out, what you can do is you can actually move Echo around while you're shooting. So let's say you're shooting, you can move Echo around and do all that. The only time you can't use Echo, I believe, is when you're reviving. Otherwise, I've done it while reloading, while healing, all of that fun stuff. So keep that in mind. Definitely a massive benefit. Another quick note that most people don't realize is that Echo cannot be eliminated. So if you forget about that, remember Echo also can't be eliminated whatsoever. But that's also the downside because Echo just stays there screaming, Hey, Vantage is right here, Vantage is right here. 
All right, Vantage of Sniper. Always the benefit. The reason why I'm picking here is because the Sniper on most of these maps when it comes to Storm Point, Olympus, and World's Edge when individuals are crossing, if they have to cross an open field, this is your massive strength when it comes to sniping. This does a base damage of 50, and if you get the follow-up shot with the Sniper's Mark, it does 150. Now, it reloads every round 40 seconds per round which goes up to four minutes for a total of six rounds if you have an ult excel which we don't have any you garner two if you use an ult excel but you can get four if you do the ultimate reload so there is that massive benefit there saves you quite a bit of time especially at the start like we mentioned remember everyone at the start is mostly on white so you're going to pretty much get an insta down if you're facing a conduit then you do have that extra hp and that does kind of suck now, remember as well, the bullet size is massive. It is a massive bullet. You don't have to leave very much at all. It's super easy, barely an inconvenience when utilizing this. Now, my biggest tip when it comes to advantage is you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. You just have to take it because the bullet size is large. It does help you if you're trying to hit somebody who's trying to peek because that bullet could thread the needle a lot better and hit the target. So there is that also added benefit. Now, I recommend do not hold ADS when it comes to sniping, okay? I can't stress that enough. Do not, I repeat, do not just sit here and hold the ADS. Now, what you can do is you look at your passive and bait them out and then pull out the sniper. Remember, it is a second, but you want to bait them consistently, especially afterwards if you hit somebody with a sniper bullet. The worst thing you can do afterwards is just hold a sniper shot there because they know that you're looking and they may not repeak. You want to encourage them to repeak. Now, when I was running a G7 scout, the benefit here is that if you're running another sniper, and I do this and a lot of pros and preds even fall for this consistently, is that if you shoot and switch, they may think that you're not looking anymore. And so if you have a Sentinel or if you have a Sniper, this is the added benefit that you can start shooting in that area and blast them again. And because they think you might have run out of bullets, and if you haven't, then you can bait and then snipe them again and they will repeak. Remember, the, the Sniper's Mark does gain 15% extra damage and lasts for about 10 seconds. Now, this is not wall hacks. This does help if you're trying to hit somebody within caustic gas vantage uh you know trying to figure out the right decoy if you hit the right one to begin with or also in van, uh, you know bangalore smoke so there is that added benefit so remember it does 50 shot 50 damage for the first one 150 for the follow-up it can hit door handles and blast them open doesn't destroy them but it does open them a little bit so again if you're trying to hit somebody at a distance you might hit them more in the body i tend to go for more body shots just because of the bullet signs just to guarantee that hit if you need to then just aim a little higher for the headshot but sometimes because of the bullet it still aims for the body kind of is what it is i don't i don't know um massive benefit if people are taking zip lines you know do that extra damage and they're a predictable movement speed i was fine and you're probably wondering how i hit most of the shots it's mostly just from battlefield experience my biggest tip is always you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. If you don't take them, then you're gonna miss. Remember, on mouse and keyboard, you don't have aim assist, but if you're on controller, you do have aim assist. I don't really know how that feels. I don't use controller, I never have on Apex Legends. So there is that. So now let's discuss a few more things here and we'll kind of wrap up the video overall. We've covered quite a bit. All right, as we wrap up the video, We've covered so many tips and advices here, and so I, I hope I didn't miss anything. I had every bit of notes written down to make sure I didn't, but if I did, comment down below, and I'll be sure to cover it in great detail. Maybe we'll do a follow-up video as well as shorts. Now, one of the biggest things I wanna talk about real quick is I hope when her heirloom comes out and why I'm leaving it towards the end of the video, is if you actually technically use, let's go ahead and grab a weapon, <laughs> we need to grab one, is the Buster Sword, and I hope when she has her heirloom, is actually a a negative so let's showcase this so an example Take so say you know you're trying to ads it takes a second afterwards to pull out your ads if you want to look for information because the ant there you go see that's a great example i'm spamming the button and the sword wants to do this like pull out animation right it, because it doesn't allow you if you're pulling out the sword ready i can't ads it's essentially a nerf to Vantage running the Buster Sword. So if you're wondering why I may not run the Buster Sword as much on Vantage, and sometimes I don't mind just, you know, because it looks cool. Fortunately, because if you wasted money on it like I did, then just know that that happens. There you go, spam. Doesn't work, right? So keep that in mind. If you wasted money on the Buster Sword like I did, that is the negative. What I'm putting it here is that when we do get an heirloom for Vantage at some point in the near future, that it doesn't break her passive, that she has to do a forced animation. 
because that honestly i'm gonna be real with you all of you would suck there. right so it's only a specific animation it doesn't always happen but it is a pay to lose heirloom so let's let's hope for some wishful thinking there so as we recap some final things she can be really fantastic for the squad garnering points to leveling up armor she's very squad oriented she's best for supporting any role that's missing with gaps she's best at range of course that kind of makes a lot more sense but she can push when needed she's a very flexible legend across the board and she maximizes again on a very niche kind of role if you happen to have that strength and i hope that this guide overall i know is very long and i appreciate your patience watching it through and i try to put some of the more interesting stuff towards the start and then as we kind of get more of the details that you may already know towards the end but it's still your master guide to vantage so again thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to leave a like comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys all in the next one